Hi everyone, Chas from Chas's Crazy Creations. I am just gonna get my computer set. I'm a little early, I did that intentionally. I wanna get all set up for everyone. So I'm gonna first drop in the comments some information that you guys might be needing during today's live. So let me go ahead and get this set up as we're live. I hope you guys are all doing well. If you join me early, drop in the comments where you're watching from and we'll go ahead and get started here in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead, I need one more thing to drop here and that has to do with the supplies in case you are interested in any of the supplies that I'm using today. All right, thank you for joining me today on, uh, we're doing craft and, oh, thank you, thank you, Amy. <laughs> Um, thanks uh, for joining me for Craft and Chat Live. We also have a group, Craft and Chat Live group, we'd love you to be a part of. And today we're going to be upcycling some containers. Thank you for joining me. I know I'm not at my normal time. I'm usually at 1 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, and right now I'm usually doing my mindful moment. So while we're waiting, because I do have a couple minutes before it's actually time, let me fill you in on what my day has been. So today I had to go to physical therapy for my hip as some of you know I've had two hip surgeries and breast cancer in the last year. So I went to physical therapy this morning and then I drove to Denver to meet my hip surgeon for a follow-up and he said things are looking really good. So both hips are good and I'm six months into the second hip surgery. They take a year to recover because it's all natural tissue. So it just, it's slow and steady. So last weekend I was able to do a 7.4 mile hike with a 600 foot incline. So that was a huge accomplishment for me. And now I'll be working my way towards dancing again because in, in case you didn't know, I have a dance degree. Um, I've taught a dance. I directed a dance program for like 24 years and I've danced since I was five years old. And no, dance is not what did this to me. <laughs> dance can, um, contributed to the wear and tear, but no, it's some genetics too. So um, let's go ahead and get started. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be taking some, let me grab one here. We all have them. Every once in a while you get these um, containers that maybe had wipes in them or, you know, there's just random containers. So we're gonna do some upcycling and then I'm gonna teach you how to make some different things. You can use them for different things in your home, um, including some do-it-yourself wipes. Cause I know we're having trouble still finding Clorox wipes and I'm not a big chemical girl. I like natural stuff. So I'm gonna be showing you how to clean your home with something that you can put in these to clean your bathrooms and um, your counters and those kind of things too. So I'm gonna pan you down so you can see and go ahead and drop in the comments where you're watching from, I'd love to know. So let me move you down so you can see the table. And let me make sure I can see you guys. Okay, so um, this is the first container. I'm gonna be doing them three different ways. And this first one, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lid off of. And um, all I've done so far is removed the, remove the label, you just pull it off. And there's this um, residue on the back and that's okay. Um, you can really work to get that off. I have achieved getting it off and, but it, it's not a huge deal. It's really a personal preference. So I'm gonna see if I can see the comments here. I just realized that I can't see them just in case you guys ask a question along the way. So if you have a question, please drop it in the comments. All right, so what I have here, I'm gonna move you up just slightly because I can't quite see what I'm doing. All right, this is just contact paper from Dollar Tree. So I have cut it for the um, length of the container and I'm gonna peel some of the backing off. Now, I will just admit as much as everyone that sometimes contact paper is a love-hate relationship. Some days it goes on perfect and other days it just is a big fat mess. So <laughs> we're gonna see how it goes on today. But ultimately what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set my container onto the contact paper and then we're gonna try to roll it alongside and smooth it out as we go. Um, some, like it's going on wrinkly and the great thing about contact paper is you can start over. So just peel it back um, and sometimes, yeah, you just got, it's trial and error and what I like about the dollar store paper is it does come off easy and go back on. Um, so that's kind of nice. Sometimes um, some contact papers are super sticky and then it's really hard to work with them. So 
You just got to kind of decide how you want, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to see this line right here and I'm going to use that to my advantage to help me line it up as well. So that might help me get a nice, a nice start on it too. And if it doesn't go on okay this time around, I won't waste a bunch of time on it because I can always come back and fix it later. But um, some, some contact papers are super, super sticky and then you don't get the opportunity to go back and fix them. So that's a little bit harder to deal with. And you just kind of rub it on and try to get rid of the bubbles as you go. You can also use, some people use a credit card to smooth them over. Um, some people like to use, um, like Pampered Chef comes with those little scrapers for jars and those are pretty slick. Thank you for joining me. How has your day been going? Drop that in the comments. I'd love to know how your day is going. And thank you for joining me today. All right, so you could trim this up. I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way around with it, so. All right, so this is contact paper. Now this may not be the most attractive contact paper, I realize that, but I'm using it for a specific purpose that I hope that you'll like as much as me. So what I'm gonna use next is some um, Apple Barrel multi-surface um, paint. And it's by Plaid, I'm a huge Plaid fan. I'm actually a Plaid ambassador, so because I'm such a fan of theirs too. I don't usually post anything that I don't support or believe in, and Plaid is something I've used for years for all my crafts, I'm a big, big fan. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put a little, of, I'm gonna give it a little shake to make sure it's mixed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this paper plate. Actually, this one's brand new, so I have to pull the lid off without trying to get it on myself. That's always a challenge, you know? There we go. Got a little on myself, but that's the great thing. It's water-based, washes off, love that. Who's a, who's a fan of plaid? Send some likes and hearts if you're a big plaid fan too. Apple Barrel Folk Art. So many products, I'm a huge, huge fan. Okay, so I'm going to, this is the lid. You can do this any way you want. This is basically the base. There's the black paint. Now I'm gonna take um, some brushes and you really, it, it doesn't matter how you do this, it's really your personal appeal, whatever you like. So I'm just gonna lightly dab the paint in there, but then I wanna offload it because I don't want a ton of paint. It won't create the effect I want. And I want the bristles bristles to spread out a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go make some little marks across as I go here. And you can do little marks, big marks. It's kind of, think of it as therapy. <laughs> and you're just gonna go around and make some marks that you like. And let me tell you what my inspiration is and then maybe you can tell me if you see it or not. I grew up in Minnesota, and in Minnesota we have um, lots of birch trees, and here in Colorado we have aspen trees, and they all kind of are like this, where they just have these little black lines on them, and you can make little dots. I have made birch tree wine glasses. You can find those on my blog. But you're just gonna go around and you can do, um, let's see if I can do this without getting paint on my table, but like I said, it's water-based, it'll come off. You can do, um, let's see if I can do it, you can see what I mean. So sometimes on the trees, there's these lines, and then one of the things that I always saw in the middle, let me grab my other paintbrush for this part, and get a little paint on it and offload it, and then put it in the middle. And I always saw these on the trees and I always said they were eyeballs. <laughs> so sometimes they, you know, could freak you out a little bit as a kid, as you saw the little eyeballs, but you're just gonna go around and, and you know, make your little dots, your lines, as few or as many as you want. This is just one idea of how to upcycle these jars. Like I said, I'm gonna give you a few different ideas and I'm even gonna talk about more because I could do this all day. It's really easy for, for me to come up with like, oh, and you could do this and you could do that. So that's the fun part. 
Has anybody else upcycled any of these containers? Drop that in the comments if you've done something with your containers in the past. I'd love to know what you created with your stuff. So I painted it all the way around. And like I said, I've got one eyeball there. Maybe I'll go back and make another one. Um, I might add some dots to this later. Um, I'm gonna set this paintbrush down before I get it all over myself even more. But, you know, just making kind of that birch tree look, it makes it just not a regular container anymore. So if you like this, please send largs, please, please, please send hearts, please share this with anyone who might be interested in upcycling some containers and then we'll talk about lots of things that I use them for. So that's just one idea. So let's make another one while this one dries because I need it to dry a little before I talk about what I put in it. This one, this next one's gonna be super quick and easy. Let me move my paint out of the way. So this is a really big one. Let me move you up just a little bit so I can show you. So this one I think was Lysol, I don't know. So sometimes the bummer is that they come with a different lid and then you're like trying to match, right? Because this last one was clear. So this one is got the yellow lid. But what I'm gonna do with this one um, is really easy. This is like, if you want super simple, um, you can get the Main Street Creations decals. Um, you can get them online and you can also find them sometimes at dollar stores. But if you're looking for specific ones, I, sp I suggest going online. Um, that way you can pick out the one that you want because otherwise you're at the mercy of, you know, whatever shows up at the dollar store. And you know how that goes. Sometimes things are there and sometimes things are not there. So I'm just gonna peel one of these off and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on and smooth it on there. And you could just go with one if you want or you could put more around, but see how easy that was? That was super easy. And um, you could, you know, put another one on the back side or whatever you want, but super simple. And let me show you um, another one that I did with these decals too. Um, this one's on my blog actually. So this one, I did the same thing. They sometimes sell these um, little, I don't know what they're really for. I just use them for what I want to use them for. But these were also the same thing, Main Street decals. And then you peeled it off and I wrapped it around and then I bought the stickers to write what we're gonna talk about. And this is one use I use for them. Oh, thank you, Marla. Um, trash bags. So I just use stickers and then we keep these everywhere. So trash bags is one of my big uses for these. Um, and you can either, you know, some of us, sadly, let me show you, still have at the grocery store, they're still using plastic bags. Now I tend to use these collapsible crates, but when they deliver my groceries during COVID, they always put them in the plastic ones. And we are um, big fans of reusing stuff. So these have been used as parachutes for superheroes, um, trash bags. We've used them to stuff outdoor pillows. You can use your trash bags for a lot of things because I don't just want them to end up in the landfill, of course. So we just take these and we crimple them up and we shove them into the top of these. And then, like I said, um, these go, I have them in every bathroom. I have them in the kitchen for quick grabs. We put them in our cars. So that way, you know, you're driving down the road and if you got kids, you know, they just like, well, I've got trash and they'll just leave it on the floor. And I'm like, no, 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 that's my car. <laughs> So I have trash bags in my car too. Um, and I've even made like a little trash can that sits on the floor there for them. So stickers are, decals are a real easy way to upcycle these. And then, like I said, you can use them for trash bags. And these little labels, if you wanna label them, are great. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So I can let it dry a little bit before we move on. So here's another one. This one has a blue lid. And one of the things I wanted to mention, this one I'm gonna be using um, folk art chalkboard paint. So again, up another plaid item, big fan of plaid, like I said. And this chalkboard paint I have used for so many things. It is awesome. The big trick there is just um, following the directions, but it's really easy to use. So I'm gonna go and come back to my paper plate here shake up my chalkboard paint. The instructions are on it. They tell you what to do um, and it really works. Like I've had good success for this with this chalkboard paint. Um, it just tells you to put a coat on, let it dry, and then put another coat on and then it talks to you about seasoning the uh, seasoning so you can use it as a chalkboard. 
So we'll talk about that too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off of this one as well. Look, there's already trash bags in there. <laughs> I'm going to have to unstuff this one for my, for my other things I want to show or swap some things out. So this one, you're just going to go ahead and you just paint it. Now, stroke marks can matter. So you want to create nice long lines. Um, and you can use different paintbrushes too. Like this is just a standard um, plaid paintbrush, but you could use, they have fine ones that are, they're often the bristles are white for fine. And then the details are, um, the details of the stroke marks are less. So you can definitely not worry about that as much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully paint this all the way around. I had grabbed wax paper to put out here because I'm a big fan of just throwing down some wax paper to protect your surfaces, but I obviously set it down somewhere and didn't mean to. So how many of you are watching for the first time today? Drop that in the comments. I'd love to know who's watching for the first time today. And welcome, welcome to all of you returners. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you so much. Did anybody see my Home Talk TV episode yesterday with the mason jar glasses? I was wondering what you thought of those. If you missed it, you can always check it out over on Home Talk TV. I'm gonna flip this one more time. Being careful not to get it on myself. Again, but what I love, water-based. Love water-based stuff, cleans up so nice. All right, there we go. So that's one coat, and I'm not gonna worry that I got that up there because um, the lid's gonna go there. So now we let it dry, um, and then you would go ahead and put a second coat on it. And then we'll talk about the chalkboard paint here, but let me go ahead and get it back onto the lid. There we go. And I'm gonna move it here, so there it is. I'll turn it this way. Now it's gotta dry. So one hour of drying, then a second coat on it, Please send likes, please send hearts if you think this is awesome. And share this with anybody who might be interested in what we're doing today. So with this, this stuff dries really fast, but um, I usually follow the guidelines. So it's not going to dry in our show today, but I'll explain to you what you do next. So let it dry for an hour, then you're going to paint on a second coat. Let the second coat dry, I believe it says for 24 hours. Then you take a piece of chalk and you have to season a chalkboard paint. You have to season chalkboard paint. Um, the reason for that is if you don't season it, and I'll explain that, your writing will stay on there permanently and it won't erase, which then defeats the whole purpose of chalkboard, right? So by seasoning it, you take a piece of chalk and you rub it all over the entire piece, the, all, all your surface. So you rub it this way, you rub it this way, you color it in so the whole thing is coated every direction of chalk all the way around or any surface that you're painting. Then you wipe it off with a soft cloth. Um, the 24 hours is important or it'll you can scratch it off. So the that 24 hours is cure time. So then you season it with the chalk, you, write, you erase it, and then you can write anything you want to on this and it'll erase. Um, if you end up wiping it off with a damp rag because you wanna clean it up, you need to re-season it again. Um, it'll be better the second time, but you just wanna keep seasoning it or those words just tend to stick. Uh, and this is true of any chalkboard. So if you just went and bought a chalkboard today and didn't season it, you're, those letters are more prone to sticking in numbers. So that's why you season the chalkboard paint and then you can write whatever you want to on this container. So maybe it's bags, maybe it's wipes, maybe, you know, whatever, whatever you're gonna put in here, you can write and it can change because you can use it for more than one thing then. Maybe you wanna put Legos in it for your kids. Maybe you wanna, you know, toys, pencils, colored pencils, markers. It's like so endless. You know, you could put plants in here. <laughs> there are so many uses. See, I told you my brain works like that. You could just keep going all day long. All right, that one's set aside to dry. I'm gonna move my paint. Let's talk about, while well, my hands are drying, let's talk about some other options quick. So I have to grab it here. There are a lot of other choices. So this is wallpaper. Um, I have wallpaper remnants that someone gave to me. And this you dip in water. So wallpaper on them, that's another option. So you can also ask for samples a lot of times at stores and they'll give you some. Oh, thank you, Christy. I'm so glad you're a first timer. Oh, thanks, Diane. I'm so glad you're a first timer here too. Welcome guys. Um, thanks for the love. 
This is a scarf that I found at Dollar Store um, and you could use Mod Podge and this is some scraps from a vinyl tablecloth or maybe a napkin or wrapping paper or newspaper or a phone book, which I know you're gonna be like, who has a phone book? Our town still delivers phone books. We don't really use them. They help us light our fires outside in the summertime. <laughs> or like I said, I use them on things. So for that, you would take and you would put your Mod Podge on You'd put your napkin or your cloth or your wrapping paper on that and then you'd put Mod Podge over the top and then it seals it. So you guys have seen me do Mod Podge before. Um, I also just go to my blog and you can type Mod Podge and up will come a bunch of projects. So that's some more options. Like I said, so many possibilities, so many options. Okay, so I could do this all day as you know. So let me go on now, let's move on to what we're gonna put inside. And some of these are wet, so I will be avoiding the wet ones. Um, but let's talk about, so we've talked about trash bags. Let's bring this one back, cause it's already dry. And now we're gonna talk about one of my favorite things, vinegar. So vinegar is an acid, and those of you who know me know that I am a natural cleaner. Um, I've kind of been a natural cleaner for a long time, but then breast cancer made me even more so. Um, the acidity in vinegar is a great cleaner. Um, it is not on the disinfectant list, but it does kill a lot of germs. You just can't use it on granite. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take cloths or microfiber clean cloths. You're gonna put them inside the jar like so. I have a whole blog post. Well, I have many blog posts on vinegar, but I have one dedicated to vinegar hacks. So if you go Google or put that in my search engine on my blog, right, Google hacks, or sorry, vinegar hacks, um, it'll tell you all the things you can use vinegar for, whether it's cleaning or um, vinegar ice cubes for cleaning your garbage disposal, so many different things. So vinegar also kills weeds. You spray this stuff on your weeds and it's gonna kill them. The higher the potency of your of the acid in your vinegar, the faster it will kill those weeds. Um, and then when you're using it to clean, all you're gonna do is the ratio can be, you can use straight vinegar if you want, but you can use one to one. So like one cup of vinegar and one cup of water if you wanna dilute it and that still cleans it. It's still strong enough to clean. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the vinegar into here like so, and, you, and I'm gonna use straight vinegar. I can always add water to it later, but I just wanted to show you how this works. So vinegar's in there, all of those cloths are getting wet. You put your lid on. Now, you need to wipe a counter in your kitchen as long as it's not granite. Acidity is bad for granite and porous surfaces, so not for that. Tile, yes, I clean my tile floors with vinegar all the time. I clean it with a steam cleaner or I clean it with vinegar. Those are my two go-tos. So now I pull the lid open, I can clean my bathroom, I can clean my bathroom counters, my bathroom sinks, my kitchen counters, my kitchen sinks, and then when I'm done, I put it in the wash. Then I clean it and then I put it back in here and I have a new one and you're recycling, you're saving. You know, you're saving the world. Yay, for saving the world. The other thing this is great for, these are fabric softeners. Vinegar is great for a fabric softener. So throw this in your dryer instead of those chemical loaded fabric softeners and you will soften your clothes. And no, they won't smell like, I mean, there's vinegar in here, but you're not putting a whole thing of vinegar in. You're only putting one. So it should not smell like vinegar when you're done. And if you're worried and you're not a big fan of vinegar, add lemon juice. Lemon juice is another acidic, acidic, <laughs> acidic thing. And so, they work together, not against each other. Like baking soda is a base and vinegar is an acid. The two cancel each other out and you're doing nothing. But acid with an acid is good. So you can add lemon juice or any citrus and scent your dryer sheets with that naturally. You can wipe those counters again. So straight vinegar, vinegar and water or adding citrus. So that's one option and you've got one set of wipes and how inexpensive is that, right? Okay, let's go with the other option, which, let me grab it here. Where did it go? I need this and this. And I need another container and some cloths. Okay, so this is the other one. And you can find this again. I, made, I have like a whole blog post on laundry cleaners and I have a whole blog post on make your own house cleaners that are all from natural ingredients. 
Um, and they're good. They're disinfectants and sanitizing, so they're, they're good. Okay, this is the um, sunflower. And this is called Castile Soap. You can find this on Amazon. You can find it at Walmart. Um, there's lots of brands, lots of varieties. Look for it um, to be paraben free. Paraben is code for estrogen. Um, and especially anybody who's had breast cancer that had hormone positive receptors, you wanna avoid anything that makes hormones in our bodies. Um, paraben is like, yeah, it, when all of us know we need to avoid all those hormones in the milk for our little girls and boys out there, so it's in everything, you guys. It's in your shampoo, it's in your soap. So avoid the word paraben. Um, I learned that from my um, my doctors. <laughs> um, so this is a natural soap. Uh, and it is made out of um, natural things. You can get it non-scented. So if you're you know sensitive, just get unscented or the baby formula. This one is lavender and it's natural lavender. It's not chemical lavender, which is another important thing. So... Same thing, you're gonna put your microfiber cloths in or washcloths in a jar. The other trick, paper towels. If you're a big paper towel fan, you can put paper towels inside one of these containers and you're gonna be making your own wipes. That's on my blog too. Then you're gonna add, um, you have one cup of water. This is a little more than that. Um, and then one tablespoon Castile soap. And you're gonna put those together and mix them up. And I'm gonna, Make a little bit of a guess. But basically, you know how soap is so great? We should wash our hands with soap. That's what it is. And then you're gonna stir that up, which I forgot a spoon. Let's see, I can use something. My scissors, that'll work. It's cleaning them anyways, right? Stir that up. There we go. Now I just clean my scissors, awesome. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this and pour this into My container and it's the same thing and I would put I will put more um, cloths in here too I got to wash some more um, but the same thing your container is in there you've got your stuff ready to go when it's time these are safe for granted yay any porous stuff it's just soapy water so it's disinfectant it will clean it's great so again sinks counters kitchen bathroom any surface that you want to wipe off in your car. Maybe you, you know, you want to wipe off your steering wheel. This stuff, this is your disinfectant and it's all natural and it's soapy water. And now you take it out. Um, if there's extra, you can wring it out. You can leave, you know, um, most of the time you'll probably end up that they're soaked, right? And then you just go, you wipe your surface, clean it up. When you're all done, you take this and you wash it. And then when you're done, you get to throw it back in and start over. Again, good for the environment. You can find all this stuff at your grocery store or on Amazon or at Walmart. So it's super awesome for that. So let me bring you back up so I can look at the camera again. So we have made three. Well, I, I showed you four. So this was one. I'm trying to make sure I can see what I'm doing. Easy decal one. Where'd my other easy decal one go? Other easy decal. So those were easy to upcycle, super easy, just add your stickers. Hey, give your, give your kids some paint and markers. Let them go to town on them. Oh, secret trick. So nobody likes permanent markers, washables, wipe off. Dry erase markers are your friend. Dry erase markers can go on this stuff and it will stay, but you can get it out of clothes and out of skin. So dry erase markers are good. Give your kids some dry erase markers and let them go to town on your windows and let them go to town on your mirrors. It wipes off, not your walls but your mirrors and your windows, your kids will be like, oh my gosh, I'm breaking the rules. You know, <laughs> my kids love it. They thought it was like awesome. They're older now. <laughs> okay, this is my birch tree one. And in this one, I put the vinegar. So we did the vinegar water um, wipes that are good for cleaning and um, fabric softeners. That one is listed under vinegar hacks on my blog. Um, we did the trash bags, right? So we can store those in our car. We can take them with us places. You can put them in your bathrooms in different places. And then we did the Castile soap also so that you've got disinfectant wipes and then you wash them and repeat. We talked about all the different options you could decorate them with. Um, I think that, oh, and then we have this one, the chalkboard paint one, which is already dry. So now I just need to add one more coat, let it dry overnight and then season it. Don't forget to season it. 
Please share this with anyone who might be interested. If you like this, please send likes and please send hearts. I'd love for you to join me here on Facebook. Um, I also do Instagram. I have a blog and a YouTube channel. I'd love it if you join me there. Um, tomorrow, super, super exciting, guys. Tomorrow, Chloe from Celebrate and Decorate and I are making a huge announcement at noon Mountain Standard Time. And you can watch it here on my page or we'll be streaming it between both of our pages. So don't miss our super exciting announcement. Um, thank you for joining us at Craft and Chat Live. Uh, I'll be doing, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I will be doing a mindful moment next. Uh, as soon as I get myself settled here, I'll come and do a mindful moment for those of you who have been joining me for those. Um, Tuesdays I do the longer stretch class and um, each day I try to join for a little bit of stretch, de-stressing and anxiety, so I hope you'll join me for that. Um, all the information is in the comments. Some of the things I use today or references for it are in the comments and I am so excited that you joined me today. Thank you so much for being here and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.